Hello and thank you for watching this video on running Microsoft SharePoint on AWS Cloud. I am Pathik Rawal, working as Senior Partner Solution Architect here at AWS. So let's get started. AWS Cloud provides a suite of infrastructure services that enable you to deploy SharePoint Server 2019 securely, affordably and with high availability. Running SharePoint Server on the AWS Cloud gives you flexibility and agility and you can fully customize and extend SharePoint for your business processes. So let's look at main benefits of running Microsoft SharePoint on the AWS Cloud. Number one, quickly adjust to business change. Running SharePoint on the AWS Cloud allows you to add capacity as needed without long lead time. You can easily scale up or down as business demand change. Stay ahead of the curve by adjusting capacity in minutes and hours, not days or weeks. Number two, no new hardware to buy. AWS offer low pay-as-you-go pricing which eliminates hardware acquisition cost and allows you to pay only for the capacity you need. We do all of the hardware management so you can focus on higher value activities than replacing hard drives. Number three, shift capital expense to operating expense. It allows you to move from capital expense to operating expense and also reducing operating expense on the cloud. You no longer need to plan, procure, manage and depreciate your IT infrastructure. You can replace large upfront expenses with more predictable costs that scale up your business. Now let's see how we can automate the SharePoint deployment on AWS Cloud. AWS provides Quick Start Deployment Guide for SharePoint Survey 2019. The Quick Start Reference Deployment includes architectural consideration and configuration step for building a Microsoft SharePoint Survey 2019 environment on the AWS Cloud. There are three deployment options for SharePoint using the Quick Start Guide. You can deploy SharePoint farm into a new VPC. You can deploy SharePoint farm into an existing VPC. You can deploy single SharePoint server into an existing VPC. The single SharePoint server is more suitable for development and testing environment. There are a number of ways to design the topology of your SharePoint farm depending on your requirements. In SharePoint 2016, Microsoft added a feature called min role which helped simplify deployment performance and reliability of SharePoint farms. This approach is used for multi-server AWS cloud formation template provided by the Quick Start. Deploying the Quick Start with the default parameter builds the highly available SharePoint environment based on multi-server topology in the AWS cloud. Let's deep dive into the reference architecture. VPC configuration. When deploying a Windows-based architecture on AWS cloud, we recommend a VPC configuration that supports the following requirements. Critical workloads should be placed in minimum of two availability zones to provide high availability. Internal application servers and other non-internet facing servers should be placed in private subnet to prevent direct access to these instances from the internet. Remote desktop gateways should be deployed into public subnet in each availability zone for remote administration. Other components such as reverse proxy server can also be placed into this public subnet if needed. Active Directory Domain Services To provide user authentication and authorization, the Microsoft SharePoint server in this reference architecture use Active Directory Domain Services. As you deploy your environment, you should place at least one domain controller in a private subnet in each availability zone. Remote Administration As we design the architecture for a highly available SharePoint farm, we should also design for highly available and secure remote access. We can do this by deploying an RD gateway in each of availability zone. In this case of an availability zone outage, this architecture allows access to the resources that may have failed over the other availability zone. For the demonstration, I have deployed SharePoint farm using the quick start guide. This guide is well documented with the steps like preparing AWS account, downloading SharePoint, configuring prerequisite and SQL server preparation etc. So won't deep dive into those steps. But let's go to step number five, launch the SharePoint stack. When you use this link, launch the SharePoint stack, you will be redirected to CloudFormation. The CloudFormation template is stored at Quick Start's S3 bucket. In the next step, you will specify parameters like key pair name for your server access, availability zone, SharePoint binary bucket, SharePoint binary key, SharePoint product key, and many more. To know more about the required parameters, you can refer the document. 
since I have already deployed SharePoint using the template, so let's look at the SharePoint farm deployment on AWS Cloud. These are the EC2 instances for the SharePoint. We have one remote gateway, four web frontend server, two in each availability zone, two domain controller, DC1, DC2, one in each availability zone. This deployment also consists of two failover cluster, node one and node two for the SQL server and one failover cluster for the file server. Now let's look at the load balancers. There are two load balancers, one for SharePoint admin, which is of type network and another one is for internal SharePoint site, which is of type application. Let's look at the security groups. These are all security groups deployed for your SharePoint server deployment. There are elastic IP addresses as well. So you need to configure your account to ensure that you have enough capacity or limit for the elastic IPs. Let's look at the VPC configuration. So for the VPC, this is the VPC used for the SharePoint deployment. There are subnets, two public subnet and two private subnets. Net gateways. There are two net gateways, one for each availability zone. I can access the central admin site using the load balancer DNS. Looking at the web application, I created one web application on port 80. If you look at the site collections for the internal website, I have created one site collection and I can access this site collection using this URL. I can now navigate to the site collection and this is my team site hosted on port 80 in the web application, in the default web application. Thank you very much for watching.